Hello, um, this is Julia Quant, also known as Quant Universe, or QU, and um, today I'm going to show you a little bit of how I draw and what my artistic process is like. Um, mostly I'm just going to show you how I ink and paint and not really how much, um, how I sketch. Um, but here's a drawing that I was working on. And this is a bit unusual drawing because usually <laughs> I work in a very small canvas, but I'm trying to um, train myself to work in a bigger canvas. Um, so this is a eight and a half by ten or eleven size piece of paper, 300 DPI. So it's pretty big, and this is 100% zoom. So this is bigger than what I'm used to, but. Um, I'm going to try it anyway. So, um, as you can see, I have three layers here already. This one actually doesn't have anything on it yet. Um, this was the very, very bottom sketch layer. As you can see, it's very loose, um, just to give an idea where everything is. And this is a more detailed sort of sketch layer that I put over it. Um, so I'm going to zoom in, and I like to work on the details very close up, um, even if I'm using a smaller canvas, so this is pretty normal for me. And this layer up top is what I'm going to be using um, for my line art. I have a here a bunch of tool presets and basically there's um, some brushes that I either got online or made myself. Um, this one here is the one that I made for myself and I enjoy this brush a lot. Um, it's the one that I used here um, for this basic sketch. Um, it's kind of a soft pencil kind of look. Um, and I usually end up line arting in black, but this time I'm also going to force myself to go a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, and I'm going to line art in purple instead. Um, it's not that different from black, but it gives it a little bit more color. So here I have my layer 2, which is where this sketch layer is. I'm going to turn off layer 1, and I'm going to put this at about 75 opacity. And the layer above it, I am going to start with the um, line art. So I, you can see that I did a little bit of this on the sketch layer here already, um, but in the final line art, it's going to be even more pronounced. Basically, uh, the concave um, areas, or the, the areas that go in, um, they are the, the darkest points, and then the areas that go out are the lightest points. So here, I'm going to add some deeper color and vary the line weight so that it's lighter over here, because her forehead's over there. And then here is the darker point, because it's the dip where her eyes go in, and out to the lighter point of her nose, and underneath her nose is also darker, and basically vary this sort of line weight this way, and if I turn this off, you can see it has a, a very natural quality to it um, that way. Um, this picture is a profile image of her face. And I'm not, I don't really like the way that I draw profiles too much because I don't have that much practice with it. But I think I'm coming to a point where I've gotten used to it and it's better for me <laughs> um, to draw them now. So, um, again, the chin it points out, so this is a lighter, um, a lighter uh, line weight, and darker line weight here. Um, basically trying to stay very delicate um, for this female character who um, she's um, June from Video Game 999 if you have never heard of it which you should totally check out if you get the chance because it's great um, here under her uh, under her jaw I'm filling it with solid color um, because I, I just like the way that dark shadow looks underneath a person's face. Um, you'll, you'll notice that this brush, it is a very soft edged brush, 
what I like to do is I like to use a hard eraser and go over it to define the edges a little bit more um, at certain points. So that's what I do here because her jaw is a nice strong place to do this. Sometimes turn this off a little bit and I'm going to look at it at 100%. That'll give us a better idea. Um, down here, fix it up a little bit to keep those lines sharp and not um, too smoky because especially on the face you want to have more definition you can um, have it a little bit less defined um, in other areas but the face if you use a better definition on the face it'll draw attention to it um, because it'll suggest it as a point of focus so here her eyes again searching back and forth seeing what it looks like sketching the hair again same principle of line weight variation sometimes drawing in a curve is a little bit difficult um, I have a big enough tablet that it doesn't bother me too much but I really hate doing this on smaller tablets um, fixing it up with the eraser tool and um, using very light uh, pen pressure to suggest the rest of the hairline because um, you don't want to exaggerate this too much on the line art layer because this will be supplemented by coloring it in layer um, the color layer later on <laughs> um, so you don't want the lines to dominate too much but still um, you can see how I'm doing that here um, and that's basically what the line art looks like um, another thing uh, you can see this also on the sketch layer but trying to emphasize the line weight on outlines of things um, because her hair is a very uh, delicate part of the body um, you kind of get into very light lines but you want them to stand out from the rest of the body um, as an important part of the figure so here you know in corners where the hairs meet you can make that thicker so that this will be separate from her clothes on the bottom layer like that or even the outline over here like that or even over here which is you know another piece of hair that is going over her shoulder and meeting with the other hairs in the back like that um, I'm kind of just rushing through it don't want to spend too much time on this because color is another fun part of this. I don't want to keep you waiting. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see how that's looking now. It's always a little bit complicated to transfer a sketch into an actual line art because um, I feel that people are naturally attracted to sketches because um, there's a little bit more liveliness, a little bit more movement in the irregularity of the sketches and when you actually fill it in with line art um, it becomes a little bit more static and a little bit more portrait-like, which is 
why line weight variation is a good thing because it helps to keep a little bit of that um, um, the dynamic um, feeling of a sketch and as you can see this is also something I'm doing with the shadows here uh, using a little bit of cross hatching to delineate them um, which is going to help later on when I color it in like. Um, I'm gonna go this far and just really color her bust for you to see what my process is and then later I'll go back and actually finish the whole thing. Um, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. So she has a very strange hairstyle. It's kind of like a bun. Oops. Sometimes the pen pressure doesn't work. Okay. Let's indicate a little bit of that hair that goes into the style. She has a flower here. Which isn't a big deal, but it's part of her. Oh my goodness. Okay. I think the problem is my tablet cable. But it works well enough most of the time. Okay, so that looks pretty much well enough. And I'm just going to finish up her scarf here and show you how I color. at full size. Turn that off. Pull it out a little bit. Um, there are some parts where I could clean it up a little bit more, but as a teaching tool, this is about good enough. Okay, so what I like to do with color is I like to take this same brush and make it big. gonna look like that. Um, I think this works a little bit better on the smaller canvases that I'm used to because um, it doesn't lag as much but this should be good enough. Uh, create another layer, put it under that and I'm going to pick some colors for her. Um, let's start with this. Change the saturation a little bit. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, this is good enough for base color. Um, I'm going to use this big brown color. Big brush size. Zoom out until I can see the whole thing. And then this brush is really good because it's finely attuned to the pen pressure. So I can lightly press the areas that I want to look darker. I tend to just hold pen down the entire time and color it all in one go. And it has this almost watercolor kind of quality to it, which I really appreciate. Um, but as you can see, it's not entirely even, and we're going to even that out um, as we color the rest of it. But for now, this is a nice base coat. Um, just let it lag catch up with it a little bit. Um, and then lightly brush in these areas to make them darker. This time I'm not holding it down. Oops, there goes my pressure. But it's alright. It's not the end of the world. There we go. Brush these parts in. 
um, as you can see I already have a pretty decent sense of lighting and that's something that you're just going to have to develop over time. Um, I especially find it useful to, oh my goodness, what is going on here? Okay, let me try and adjust this cable. Okay, um, this is something that you develop over time. I suggest trying to copy from black and white pictures. Just find one that you really like and try to reproduce it using maybe graphite or charcoal. Um, just in black and white because if you're not worrying about the color you have to worry about the actual lightness and darkness of what you're drawing. So this is pretty light even from my standard so I'm going to bop down this a little bit um, a little bit more to the red side and then you can get some darker shadows and it, you can see that I've um, reduced the size of the brush and you know the base color oops, is a big brush and as you go into the little finer details you reduce the size so you can get these streaks that are common in hair because hair is not a uniform color hair is made out of lots and lots and lots of strands that all reflect the light in different ways, they all have different amounts of pigment, and you want to be able to reflect that when you color it in. Um, so you can see, slowly reducing the size of the brush, slowly making it darker, and going into those details, and pulling out those details. like that. And if this were, you know, an actual drawing that I would be making for myself rather than a tutorial, I'd go, to, go a little bit more in depth, um, go a little bit more out of my way to make this more detailed. But for now, I'm just showing you what I expect from the coloring process. And you cannot be afraid to go darker because when you have more intense shadows you bring out the depth of the entire drawing. So you have this contrast of the darker shadows here, the lighter shadows there, or lighter highlights there. Um, and that makes the entire piece a little, a little bit stronger. So. So let's say I've gotten to the point where I'd want to stop, and this is not actually the point at which I want to stop, but again, it's a tutorial. Um, so let's say I'm satisfied with this, then I just flip it to my eraser tool and erase all of these little corners. Clean it up. And it's okay if I accidentally erase a little bit too much, you can always go back, brush over it again. But just cut out all of this from your sketch. Because the hair is going to have to stand out on its own. Because color is relative, you might see a color that you think works well in your palette, and when you actually put it down into your drawing, it doesn't look the way you wanted it to. And that's because colors can play off of each other and trick your eye into seeing something else. So what I'm seeing here is even though I was aiming for a bit warmer kind of brown, um, the fact that my line art is purple is pulling it a little bit to a duller kind of color, which isn't necessarily what I want. So I can fix this little corner here. Um, 
and you can either go over it again with your brush or you can do a little quick cheating which really isn't cheating because this is the medium that you're working with and it's a valid tool in your arsenal basically just go into your preferences your um, hue, color, saturation, controls go in there and bring it to where you want it to be so I can go up here to my hue and saturation I'm going to up the saturation a little bit make it a little bit darker a little bit more to this side. Okay. Then I'm going to go back, brightness and contrast, up the contrast a little bit. And that looks a little bit closer to what I wanted. Now, um, I mostly used the same kind of shade of brown for this, but what you can do to help your shadows and help your shading in general is let's go take a little bit of this color and pull it into the purple side and the reason we're doing that is because the line art is purple so it's going to help um, the shadows blend in with the subject a little bit more so I can do a little bit of this and it'll look a little bit more at home with the line art it'll help to unify your painting so that the colors actually um, have a little bit of each other, have a little bit of this mix that brings out their nature so that you can see it better. Okay, so again, this is not really where I would normally stop. Um, but it is what I'm showing you how to do. Now, oops, I forgot to erase this part. There you go. Uh, let's make another layer for skin tone, which is basically the same idea, and I'm just gonna pick one of my pre-made skin tones over here. And this works no matter how light or dark the skin actually is. In this case, she is pretty pale, um, but I have a few other darker tones here that I like to use, and it's basically the same principle again. You go over the whole thing very lightly on the pen pressure, and then press down a little bit more strongly in the areas that you would like to shade. And you, you're going to have to actually look at real faces, real pictures of people, to see where this lighting would naturally occur. And I tend to shade skin a lot less um, violently, so to speak. Um, I tend to be more gentle with where the shadows are, um, and I tend to blend them a little bit more. So here, I've laid down my shadows. I'm gonna actually hold this more into red, purplish territory. Um, a little bit, a little bit of purple here. Looks a bit strange, I know, but once you start blending in the colors, it's not gonna look that bad. So, so here I have a bunch of different shades, and then you're just gonna take the eyedropper tool and find those spots where the colors are blending into each other because this is a soft brush and use that to ease in color a little bit again eyedropper tool pick one of those shades blend it in softly because that's going to reflect the soft texture of the skin and you can use it to shape the surface by controlling these shadows so here's a lighter patch which is going to highlight more delicate features of her face like that um, again I'm being a little bit careless but if you're patient, 
you can blend all of these colors together and they will look pretty fantastic if I so say so. So here we go. Now I'm going to turn off this layer so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, you also notice that I tend to go to the menu to hit commands instead of actually using the keyboard. Um, I just find it to be faster for me that way because otherwise I have to actually stop and pull out my keyboard which is under my desk and hit the keys um, and that's just annoying so I do everything by hand but you may prefer otherwise there's nothing stopping you from using them so now that I've cleaned up all of this can turn on these two layers together and they look pretty well together. Um, I'm gonna have to redo her ear a little bit because there's not enough darkness. There we go. Um, you can see that for the most part it works, but recently what I do is I go a little bit extra step. I put another layer over this and I pick a color um, to unify the whole drawing. So let's go with this lavender color and I'm going to uh, pick... yeah, overlay is pretty good, but you don't want it at 100% opacity, just something in the 30 to 50% range. Sometimes even lower if you feel that it looks a bit too strong. So here's without and here's with it, and as you can see, the entire drawing is covered in this sort of um, lavenderish glow, um, which helps to bring all the colors together. Um, but again, you can choose different things. Here's a little bit darker, or maybe this one. Oh, this looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna reduce it just a little bit more, and it looks pretty much what I wanted it to look like. Um, and it helps bring the whole drawing together. So this is just, you know, the bust really. Um, if I were really going in depth, I would cover the whole drawing. Um, this is as far as I'll go. Uh, another thing that I can do, that I sometimes do, is here's the line art layer. Let's duplicate this. Makes the whole line art, line art stronger, but what you can do set it to something like multiply and also reduce the opacity and it won't get completely get rid of the color but it will help get these darker areas to look darker so here's without and here's with it it gives a little bit more depth um, so yeah that's pretty much what my coloring process is like um, if you're interested in this brush, I can definitely show you or uh, put it up for download. Um, again, it's the brush that I made myself, um, and it has a, a very soft edge and a, a good control in terms of um, the pen pressure. Going to go very, very light and very, very dark as much as I needed to. So, um, that's pretty much what I use, and that's how it works. I hope you've learned something from this, um, and that maybe you'll be using these tips in the future. Uh, so, goodbye, and I hope to see you next time.